Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we're going to be looking at an FRQ from the 2002 AP Microeconomics exam. This is a number three question, so one of the shorter ones, but definitely an important one. All right, so um, in this question, we are given two tables of information about utility that a consumer is going to receive from consuming apples and oranges. And then there's going to be a, a variety of different questions asked about these tables. So make sure you know what these tables are giving us. In this case, it's giving us total utility. It's very important to differentiate between marginal. If you mistake that or make an assumption on that, um, it's going to cause vast consequences towards the end. So let's get through this question. The table below shows total utility and utils that a utilizing ma utility maximizing consumer receives from consuming two goods, apples and oranges. Assume that the apple costs a dollar each, oranges cost two dollars each, and the consumer spends the entire income of seven dollars on apples and oranges. Using the concept of margin utility per dollar spent, identify the combination of apples and oranges the consumer will purchase, explain your reasoning. So let's get into this, but first got to finish up these tables. Total utility doesn't do us any good, we need marginal utility. So marginal utility, utility we get from the change in total utility as we consume more units. So with zero apples, marginal utility is zero. We consume that first unit and marginal utility is 20 because our total utility goes from zero to 20. We consume that second unit, it goes from 20 to 35. So that's 15 unit increase. 10, five, and two more. So it's just a change in total utility. Now, next we need the per dollar marginal utility. How much utility are we going to get per dollar spent? So in this case, we're going to take the marginal utility of an apple, we're going to divide it by the price of an apple, which is $1. So 20 units divided by 1 is going to be 20. In each one of these cases, it's going to stay exactly the same. When you have a $1 item, the per dollar marginal utility is going to be exactly the same as the marginal utility. So it's real quick and easy. All right, now, the marginal utility of oranges, as total utility starts out at zero, first unit we consume, we are up to 30 in total utility, so marginal utility is 30, 20, 15, 10, and 5. All right, now per dollar, the marginal utility of an orange divided by the price of an orange, in this case oranges are $2 each, so we're going to divide each of the marginal utilities by $2, 15, 10, 7.5, 5, and 2.5. So we have all the information we need to start answering this question. So we are going to spend $7. We're going to spend the whole thing. So what are we going to buy first? In this case, we look at the margin utility per dollar spent. The first one we're going to grab is an apple. It gives us 20, 20 utils per dollar spent. So we just spent $1. All right, now 15 for an apple, 15 for an orange. We'll buy the apple, and then we'll jump over and buy that orange. So we've spent $4 at this point. So I can get 10 utils per dollar spent from an orange, 10 from an apple. I'm going to go buy that orange first, and then I'm going to jump back and buy that apple. At this point, we spent $7. The last unit of apples that we bought has a per dollar margin utility of 10. The last unit of oranges we bought has a per dollar margin utility of 10. So we have maximized our utility in this situation. So the utility maximizing consumer will purchase three apples and two oranges. Explain your reasoning. This is where it gets a little more complex, but there's a few different ways you can throw this out there. With this allocation, we have exhausted all income and the per dollar marginal utility of the last unit purchase of apples is equal to the per dollar marginal utility of the last unit purchased of oranges. Or the marginal utility, throw that equation out there, that would work as well. Um, to add a little bit more, to make your answer a little bit better, you might want to throw something like this out there, just to give the actual numbers to show that 10 divided by 1 is equal to 20 divided by 2 the last margin utility divided by the, per, the price of each last unit, this would kind of solidify all the points for this answer. All right, let's move on to part B. All right, with the prices of apples and oranges remaining constant, so $1 for an apple, $2 for an orange, staying exactly the same, assume that the consumer's income increases to 12. Identify each of the following. First, we're gonna find our new combination of apples and oranges that we're gonna buy, and then what is our total utility of our uh, utility maximizing combination? All right, so $12. Now, we've already done half this work, and this is where these problems get a little confusing. You're doing them on the AP exam, you've only got so much work to place to write on. Uh, make sure that you're keeping track of what you're actually looking at. So we know that in this case, that chart up top is staying the same, the table is staying the same. We've already spent $7 in that original thing. We're gonna continue right off of that. We've got three apples and two oranges so far. Next, we're going to go buy another orange. The per dollar margin utility is higher, so we're going to spend another two. 
Now it's five in, on oranges, five on apples, either or, we'll start with the orange, spend two more bucks, and then go back to the apples. At this point, we've spent the additional $5, $12 total, so our utility maximizing consumer is going to purchase four apples and four oranges. Now, the total utility, remember, we just bought four apples and four oranges, so it's fairly easy, especially with this table right here, that gives us total utility. So we look up here, our fourth orange that, or fourth apple that we bought gave us 50 units of total utility. All those apples gave us 50 units. So we add that to the total utility that we received from the four oranges that we just bought, 75. So total, consumer will receive 125 utils from the purchase of four apples and four oranges. All right, part C. We're keeping income the same, $12. We're assuming that the price of oranges now increases to $4 each. Whenever the price of a good goes up and marginal utility, total utility, everything else stays the same, the per dollar marginal utility is going to decrease. In this case, we're now we're gonna take marginal utility and we're gonna divide it by four. So 7.5, 20 divided by five, four is five, and so forth. Now we've got our new per dollar marginal utility. So we can kind of run through the same thing. So we take our $12. The first unit we're gonna buy is an apple. Gave us 20 units of satisfaction per dollar spent. Then we're gonna go buy another apple and another apple because we're not even coming close to that 7.5 until we've bought three apples. Now that we bought three apples, the next one is five, so the orange is a better deal. We're gonna drop four bucks on this orange and it's gonna give us seven and a half utils per dollar spent. So now five and five apples and oranges, we'll buy another orange and then we're gonna jump back over to apples. So at this point, we've spent all $12. We've now purchased four apples and two oranges. All right, because we still have $12, it's just that the oranges became more expensive. So the per dollar um, marginal utility of an orange went down and it changed the combination. So what is the total utility the consumer is gonna receive from this new combination? So let's take a look at it. We're still getting four apples, so I still, I'm still getting 50 utility, from apples, that's total utility from all four of those apples. And we jump over to oranges, we only bought two of them, so our total utility at two oranges is 50 as well. So in this case, the consumer is gonna receive 100 utils from the purchase of four orange apples and two oranges. All right guys, hope you got something from that. Um, if you had any questions on that, check out my consumer choice video. I run through exactly why we do certain things on those types of questions. And also, if you need any extra help on FRQ, I have plenty of videos out there. Um, to run you through different micro and macro FRQ questions. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.